let me welcome all of you here to this uh, webinar on articulating your co-op's value in the pandemic and beyond. My name is Ben Sandell, and I'm also joined today, uh, at least on my screen, on my to my right is uh, Mark Mulcahy, and on my left is Rebecca Torpy, but they may not be in the same position on your screen. Um, but I'm so glad to be here talking with you today and uh, to have them with us also. We were going to have our colleague Brittany Baird here too, but she uh, had to get some dental work at the last moment. So she's not able to be with us today. Um, so here's how the day, how our, our hour is going to go. Each of us are, that is the three of us, um, uh, Rebecca, Mark, and I are going to put some ideas out there for you, some, uh, some ways to frame up this idea of articulating your co-op's value. Um, we're going to take turns doing that. Then we're going to send you off into small groups to talk to each other about what you heard, how it applies to your co-op, um, how you might want to uh, start spreading this word, uh, articulating your own co-op's value. And then we're going to come back towards the end and have a bit of a free-for-all through the chat where you can um, start showing us, start telling us uh, what it is you talked about during that time together and ask any questions at all about it to us. And then we are going to get you out of here on time. That is our pledge to you. Um, so that's how it's going to work today. And Mark, Rebecca, and myself, we are all uh, consultants and owners of Columinate, which is a shared services co-op of consultants in the US and Canada. Um, you, we were previously known as CDS Consulting Co-op, but now we are, um, now we are Columinate. Um, so I'm going to really just plunge ahead uh, here, uh, and I want to note that when we were planning this and when we were thinking about uh, how we articulate the value of our co-ops, this is not going to be a data-driven conversation. There is There are lots of places where you can get wonderful data on how co-ops are different and uh, much better than uh, our conventional corporate competitors. That's out there. National Cooperative Grocers has posters and videos and other uh, data they've compiled. Um, this is more putting our co-ops values value into the context of what is going on in the world and the country today. So I'd like to start with a, a quote from Tom Webb, who is a, an adjunct professor at St. Mary's University. He says, cooperation is the most important thing we do. COVID-19 thrives with selfish individualism and is defeated by cooperation, uh, by the desire to help each other. Today, we face a pandemic made especially lethal by social and income inequality, hyper-individualism, self-interest, and greed. Let us choose instead to live by a set of life-affirming cooperative values, equity, equality, mutual self-help, self-responsibility, democracy, solidarity, honesty, openness, social responsibility, and caring for others. These are the values of a healthy society." End quote. And not, of course, not only are those the values of a healthy society, those are our cooperative values as set forth by the uh, International Cooperative Alliance. These are what we live by, but our co-ops live by these values all the time not just when it benefits us or not just when there is a crisis where we can put as many of our, uh, as we see a lot these days, there are all kinds of ads um, out there that are from corporations telling you how great they are and how much they care for their communities and their workers. And some may, 
But as soon as this particular, as soon as the pandemic begins to abate, uh, they are going to go back to business as usual. And all those great messages, those wonderful ads are going to give way to their usual uh, buy, buy, buy messages. Whereas we as cooperatives, this is how we live. It's how we've always lived. It's how we're going to continue to live. We exist to serve people's needs. And if anything, people's needs right now are more profound than ever. Our need for good food in a safe environment, our need for community, for people who we can make eye contact with and uh, feel connected to, whether we're in the store, whether we're ordering online and having it brought out to our car when we arrive. Um, this is a great time for us to point out how amazing our co-ops are, because they are, every single one of them. Not perfect by any means, of course. We can always improve and we always are. But because we exist to serve people first and foremost, I think that is a, uh, an amazing attribute. We don't talk about enough. We don't uh, talk enough about our cooperative values and our cooperative principles, but we should because they're worth it, they're inspiring, they're life-affirming, and we need that right now in the context of the pandemic and in the context of our uh, uh, national, federal, political, whatever. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm already on a soapbox. I'm not going to go much further than that. Um, so that, I think I will take a step back now and pass this baton to Rebecca Torpy. Thanks, Ben. Um, so it's really been a wild ride for the past two months for all of us. Um, internal structures have been tested and management teams are definitely feeling a little crispy right now. Um, but co-ops have definitely proven ourselves to be who we really are and who we've said we are. We are flexible and we are collaborative and we are community minded. And there is no doubt that it has been really, really challenging and really, really exhausting at the same time. And you know, I think um, one of the biggest lessons that I've learned as a manager at a co-op has been that actions really do speak louder than words, but words really echo. Um, you know, when we, when we don't know what the heck to do because we don't know what's going to happen next and we are decision making hour by hour, there still is this constant in our value system. And we can take directions for actions from that value system. We can always fall back on doing the best we can in the moment for our employees and our shoppers and our communities with the information that we have in the moment through that value system. Uh, that Those values are really the common ground that that's already been really, really deeply rooted in our community over time. And we can, we can really leverage that right now. It's organic and it feels natural that the co-op is taking care of its community right now. And I think that it's an energizer for us and for our community. And it also is serving as a, an awesome differentiator for us. We have a ton of community capital in our bank right now. And I think also it's this perfect time for us as leaders of our co-op to experiment and stretch ourselves. And we can really, really use this time to appreciate the goodwill of our community that's been built over time. And I think that we all know that there's a lot that we can't control right now, but what we really can control are our responses to this evolving quest that everyone has for safety and freedom from fear. And hopefully we can further elevate our perception in the community, which is already awesome, as we know. And one of the ways that we can do this is through a super solid communication strategy. And the messaging can be, or should be, you know, from my experience is 
that we are providing a safe, welcoming, comfortable, positive environment for people to shop in right now. Um, we're providing them a respite from the stress and fear that they're feeling outside as best as we possibly can. We're keeping things light and fun and we're focusing all the good that's happening around us. And we're focusing also on the folks that are stepping up in the community. You know, there's been a lot of super, super well-deserved publicity around the grocery store workers in the pandemic, and um, it's great, and we deserve it. Um, but, you know, there are also a lot of other essential service providers out there who also deserve lots and lots of honors. And, you know, it's the social services folks, it's the food bank people, it's the reporters in our community. And those groups are also doing the work that reflects our values right now too. And we can do things like supporting them through donations, through providing lunches, by offering them lots and lots of publicity, because we are really good at marketing and communications and the publicity piece they are articulating our values right now. So now is the time for us not to be bashful. Um, we have a tendency uh, not to talk up all the good that we do. We need to kind of get over that. And now is our time to really shine. So um, my suggestion is to really put your resources into your communications and really make sure that your marketing and communications and outreach folks have the resources that they have to really uh, do what they need to do to, to put out and make sure that your owners and your shoppers and community really know uh, all the good that you're doing out there. Um, the other angle of the welcoming side of the communication strategy is really to make sure that your owners understand that they're feeling heard and actively listened to. Um, really trying to be hyper responsive and empathetic right now to their concerns is I think super, super critical. People are super stressed and the co-op is no longer that same social space that it used to be where people can come into the aisles and gab with their neighbors or sit on the patio and chill with their smoothie. You know, cortisol is high everywhere we go right now. And as we as managers are trying to navigate and figure out what the new co-op community hub looks like, what we can do in the in interim is really um, step up our ability to respond to owners. And, you know, I think it's going to take a little time to really figure out what the what it looks like, you know, moving forward in the future, what that hub looks like. But that, that's okay. Because again, if you go back to that idea of, you know, how much capital we have in the bank with our owners, that they're going to give us the leeway to figure that out. And it's good. Um, so again, experiment, figure it out. We have, we have money in the bank with our owners and our shoppers and our community. Um, they love us right now um, and we love them back. Um, you know, so just to kind of bring it all back to circle, um, you know, our values are what guide us to action when we have no idea what to do in the moment. Don't be afraid to be brave and experiment. Uh, your community really loves you. and be loud and be really, really proud about everything that you're doing right now. You don't have to do a lot, but really do make it count. Thanks, Rebecca. Um, I also want to acknowledge we're getting a lot of great feedback in the chat. Um, although Rebecca did mention donations, you don't have to, the, the kind of things we're talking about don't have to cost any money at all. It's really more talking about the good that is already happening in your co-op because we, those who are closest to our co-ops, we tend to be aware of it. We, it's, uh, you know, second nature for us. It is not for the rest of the community. And again, especially now when we're seeing so much uh, that is not positive being laid bare uh, in the rest of the business community and in the political world, we need to really talk about everything we are doing, even for the co-ops that are under severe financial pressures right now, uh, talking about the care that's being taken to protect the, the workers and the shoppers, uh, the concern for the vendors, for the farmers. Um, 
all of these things are really great things to talk about and talk about often. You can't say it enough. And now I'm going to pass it along to Mark Mulcahy. Thank you, Rebecca, and thank you, Ben. Um, I would like to just start out with if everybody who's here with us today would just take a moment and take a breath. We are all dealing with this in some way. It's different for all of us, whether it's a customer or a marketing person or a GM or something. But just let's just take a moment and take a breath. And just slow down for a minute from our busy day and our every, anything that's going on and just take a breath. And I would just like to say, welcome home. What, when Ben asked, invited Rebecca and I to be part of this, I was thinking about, I'm not in the stores right now. Um, and when we were talking, I was talking to Rebecca, I got a, more of a sense of what she's working with and, and having to deal with every day. And I just thought, I am part of the co-op community because it makes me feel like I'm at home. So welcome home. Um, I think co-ops make me feel welcome. And I think all of our customers come back to us because they feel something. And whatever words we use, whatever posters we put up, whatever happens, it, they feel something and they return to our stores because they feel safe, they feel comfortable, they feel loved, which is no small matter that someone walks into a place that they buy food and feel loved. And I would just like to take one more moment before I continue on for all of us to take a moment and reflect about our cooperative values and how they showed up before COVID-19. Just take a second and just think about what that world felt like to you and how that sh and how that showed up for you, how those cooperative values um, showed up in your daily work and in your daily living. And then I'd like you to take a moment and think about how they're showing up now. They're showing up at the Middlebury Co-op. They're putting up on Facebook the times that it's busiest or slowest in their store so people can make choices when they want to shop. That comes from love. That comes from caring about their customers. And however you look at that, you can't do anything but feel that. The Boise Co-op created a drive through farmer's market that allows people to shop at their local farmers when their local farmer's markets were shut down. Other clients of mine have hired local farmers and laid off restaurant workers to prep, pack bulk and to do curbside um, you know, pickup orders. A another client of mine uh, created and or raised their daily meal, meal allowance that they provided for their staff. And you all have your own stories on this. So what people are feeling from you, whether they can see it behind the mask, whether they, whether they can see it when they're standing out in front of your store waiting to be let in, if you're even open, they do feel loved and they do feel that from you. And I just wanted to make sure that in today's conversation, that doesn't get lost in because with everything going on, it can. You know, we have always been the leaders. When Ben brought this up about raising our voices and telling our values, Ever since I've been in this movement and ever since I've been consulting, I've always felt like cooperatives have been the leaders. We were the first ones to bring local programs into play and really pay our farmers well. We were the first ones to try new products, even though they were fringe outside in the marketplace. We were willing to bring them in because we trusted our intuition and trusted the science behind them, even when people weren't really talking about them in magazines and things like that. We've been the ones to truly listen to our customers, even when those customers felt it felt like they were the ones that weren't connected with the average society people out there. We made that we we make people feel welcome. We celebrate diversity. These are all things that when Ben was reading that list earlier on is what every single person in our society craves. And we are providing it. It may not look the same as it did before but it'll always be true. And we as leaders 
We've always led the movement. Most other businesses have copied what we do. I'm not talking about how, you know, we've not gone out and looked at someone's salad bar and decided to use that in, in a design or something. I'm talking about the values that we live every day. Businesses do marketing campaigns. They try to do what we do, but it doesn't come from love. And when we do this, that's where it comes from. And people feel that. And right now, especially, and moving out of this, people will show up for love. Sometimes we get too busy and we forget about where that comes from. And so, you know, when we're creating relationships and we talk about relationships, we live relationships. And so Rebecca was talking about taking risks. And I really appreciate the fact that all of you in your world have been willing to try new things and fail at them and still keep trying them because you know either intuitively there's a reason that you know that it'll work and that it's what's best for your community. And I think that now is absolutely critical that we continue to live in those values is how do we articulate these values? When Ben asked me that, I just think that we continue to live and work from our hearts and we continue to build and invest in our business operations and systems that'll support our staff now and beyond now that we improve the gaps in accountability and communication. Rebecca was bringing up communication. You know, if there are gaps in our organization there, we will continue to be able to, to come from love if our basic systems are taken care of. And if we continue to share these stories with everyone who comes in from their first day on, I was talking to a produce worker at the Briar Patch at the Ecological Farming Conference, and she said she came to work there because it felt like she was home and that what she felt every day at work, she felt respected. She felt that she could do good work and she could support her community while supporting her customers. And this is what she wants to do in her life. Every job that I go to, someone in that produce department or someone in that leadership team tells me about a story that they worked somewhere else, made more money, and not only made more money, but um, had a higher position often, but they never felt loved. They never felt valued. And so they come to the co-op because they can feel valued and they feel like what they contribute is something that can make a huge difference. So as we go into our conversations today, you know, one of the things that is really that is really always stuck out to me about co-ops is what Maya, Maya Angelo said. And she said, I've learned that people will forget what you said and people will forget what you did but people will never forget how you make them feel. And I just want to acknowledge everybody on this call that before this and during this, you've made someone feel loved. And that's what will keep them coming back. Thanks so much, Mark. Um, I want to acknowledge there have been some comments about uh, that People hold our co-ops to unbelievably high standards. And boy, can they bellyache when we don't achieve their perception of the extraordinarily high bar they set for us. And that certainly, that can be very uh, disheartening, especially when we're talking here about going out and talking about how great you are. Yes, there are going to be some people who are always going to take our co-ops to task. And we are not perfect, of course. But it is still vitally important that we do put those really great positive messages out there. And I think it's a pretty standard customer service maxim that, uh, you know, about one out of 100 people who are extremely pleased with your co-op are going to tell you about it. But about one of three people who are unhappy, they're going to, and maybe more, are going to tell you about that. So sure, you tend to hear more, and we care very deeply about our co-ops. We often internalize this criticism. And I am going to really encourage you to, uh, you know, some people, 
never going to be happy. Some people are happiest when they complain, but we need to put very positive messages. We are an alternative, a positive alternative out there. Um, and we need to keep blowing our horns. We need to keep spreading that word. Um, and I think co-ops that I see that do it very well, putting it out there, eventually some of the negative voices get drowned out by the positivity that uh, is attracted to other positivity. It's hard. This is a very stressful, very challenging period. Um, and it's very serious. I don't want to at all make light of the challenges that are out there for us personally, with our health, with our businesses, with our society, um, it, with our country. But we are, we can do things in the cooperative world that cannot be done in the private sector or the for-profit conventional grocery world. We can support our people better. We can support our vendors better. Uh, we can treat people better and be safer than our uh, competitors in the corporate world can. And we really need to keep that in mind and we need to keep talking about it. So I think we are going to uh, send you off to into small groups to talk amongst yourselves for a little bit. And I encourage you to, you know, talk about what you've heard here and how you are going to take it back to your business and talk about examples of things you can talk about. Your co-op can articulate about the amazing things you're doing in your community right now. And then we'll see you back after that, where we'll be able to talk a little more, answer questions, and then send you off. But great. So wonderful to see so many faces and have so many people on this. The, the uh, response we've been getting to these particular, to, to the webinars we've been doing has been really extraordinary um, and very gratifying. And uh, so thank you all for being here. Um, I encourage you to put things that came up during your small group conversations into the chat. Um, and I, I do, you know, again, I want to absolutely fully acknowledge that these are, it is a really challenging time. There's a lot of negativity. There's a lot of really stressful, hard stuff happening. Um, but we are leaders in our co-ops. We are the ones who are best positioned to be able to uh, manage a positive uh, message from our co-ops. And it's really, really important that we do that. Yes, we're not going to please everybody. Um, and yet, uh, we are doing things that others can't do, others won't do. And we do it all the time, in good times and in bad. Um, and a lot of people notice it and appreciate it. So I, again, I just want to keep encouraging you to uh, think about the positive aspects of your co-op and talk about them. Put them out there in every way, every form you can. And I'm going to pass it back to uh, Rebecca. Yeah, and I just, you know, want to want to make the comment that I think it's really important that we as managers, leaders, board members, that we are really making sure that we're checking in on ourselves and taking care of ourselves during this time. I mean, we are looking after a lot of people and we're looking after our community members, but we need to stop and make sure that we are putting on our emergency masks before we put on others because we can't help others if we're not in our prime and we're not functioning at an optimal level. So I really encourage everybody to really just Take the time, do what you need to do to make sure that, you know, you are feeling good, feeling healthy, and just really, really maintaining yourselves too. Because it's been two, two months and it's been a really, really long two months. So congratulate yourselves for, you know, taking this long marathon so far. I mean, and just really just... As Mark said, breathe. I thought that was really, really awesome. So make sure that you take the time for yourself. Some nuggets coming out of the chat. Um, one person noted that when you do encounter criticism of the co-op or complaints, thank them. 
thank the person who is bringing it up that they feel passionate enough about the co-op that they're willing to come forward with this. A lot of times being heard is amazing. It's powerful and it's very satisfying for folks. And you do want to know, of course, we all want to know how we can do better or how we might uh, not be meeting the needs of our uh of our customers and our community. Um, but again, thanking them is great. There was also a really wonderful question about uh, as boards and board members, how can we help spread this message? Um, you know, boards don't necessarily have the same uh, resources as the co-op itself has. You know, we don't have a bulletin board in our front hall of our house. And even if we did, nobody sees it. Um, and so what, what can we do? Well, one thing I would suggest is anytime you see something interesting and positive on social media from your co-op, uh, like it and forward it. Put it on your own. Show, hey, this is something the co-op's doing. This is great. I think it can be great for boards to also have some kind of regular communication, whether it's uh, posting a uh, um, uh, report from the board, a message from the board on the bulletin board, on social media, that's also a good way to do it. But I think even just forwarding the existing stuff that your co-op is putting out, that the marketing people of the co-op are putting out is a great thing to do. Uh, Rebecca, you have more thoughts on that? Yeah, um, you know, one thing too is that you can you can work with your marketing folks to develop a board uh, communication plan that can be dovetailed into the marketing plan as well. And obviously, that's something that you work with your general manager on um, to make sure that it works with your the way that you work with policy governance. But it it can be done, and um, you know, it's. It can it can work really well um, as long as it's something that really uh, can fold into your marketing plan. Mm -hmm. Great. I'm also seeing some things here about um, one person noted that some of their board members are calling other co-op owners just to say, "How are you? How are you doing? Are you talking to people? Are you you know are you getting what you need? How are you doing?" Another co-op has a program where they're matching people who uh, either are unable to or don't want to come out of their homes with people who are going shopping, who will do the shopping for them and bring it to them and leave it in a safe place for them. All, these are all great things to do, to think about, to just ideas you can come up with as ways to help other people. Um, there's also a question about this could be a new normal. We could be in this situation for a very long time. And how are we supposed to deal with that? Yes, absolutely. But I think uh, we can always be asking our community and our co-op owners, what would you like to see from us? What would make your life better during this really hard time? And listen to what the answers are. It could be really interesting and creative. There could be some great ideas there. Some might not be, but that's okay. Um, and again, listening is really important. And it's a thing that uh, doesn't happen nearly as much in our, uh, from our corporate, of, corporate competitors. Um, and I'm just looking, keeping track of the things going on on the chat. Um, and then while you're looking, something was brought up about how to keep spirits up during, the, which could be an extended time with the staff yep. during all of this. And, you know, I had mentioned meal allowances. Not everybody can, is going to be able to do that. But some stores are doing that. Some stores are providing lunch for people. Some stores are offering people four day a week shifts just to give them a day to feel more comfortable. Um uh, stores, you know, some stores are obviously offering people to stay home. I'm working with three different produce managers right now who aren't in the store on how they can virtually manage their department right now, which allows them to feel safe with their family, but also to, for this to continue to get done. So there's, I would just suggest is you said to ask your members what they want is really, I mean, and I know everybody's in conversation with their staff, but really just be in conversation about what people need um, 
on a daily basis. And it could be just some very simple things um, that can mm -hmm. help people feel more comfortable and, and get through this on a daily basis. And especially for all you board members out there, appreciation goes a very long way. Anytime you're in your co-op or interacting with your co-op, thank whoever you come in contact with for their hard work. I've been sending, sort of randomly sending postcards out to my local co-op and others uh, just saying, you're amazing. Thanks for what you're doing. Everybody loves postcards. They're just sort of fun. Um, but, you know, again, simple, simple gestures can mean a lot. A co-op uh, reaching out to its owners, to its, you know, customers to say, how are you doing? is really amazing. And for co-ops that are currently doing capital campaigns, I'm seeing that as kind of the centerpiece of the campaign that first and foremost, we're calling to say, hey, what can we do for you during this very, very challenging time? Um, and it, you know, people appreciate it. It's a small thing, but a person-to-person -person connection is not actually a small thing. It's a very big, important thing. Um, a lot of people are noting that they are using Zoom for board meetings and for staff meetings. Um, Zoom is, as we uh, can all tell, it's an imperfect uh, vehicle, and yet it is pretty important and can do some good things right now when we can't be in person. Um, Yes, it's great to also, you know, as positive things come in, letters, comments, even just things people have said as they're going through the checkout, it's great to collect those and post them somewhere. You can post them physically on paper in the store. You can also put them on social media. Um, and there is almost nothing that is too small to mention. You know, um, we right now we have some really extraordinary strawberries in our co-op. Great. Talk about that. You know, I mean, and that's not actually a small thing. I consider that a fairly big thing. Um, but uh, we have the best smelling hand soap in our co-op of any of the ones we've tried. All these, you know, it's a little thing, but it's a wonderful thing you can talk about. And really, there is nothing too small uh, to talk about. Um, I'm also seeing that a lot of co-ops have applied for and are getting approved for the PPP monies. That's great. We need to take advantage of any program we can to make sure we remain adequately capitalized. Um, yes, uh, Brian has a great thought about engaging folks to help uh, redefine what it means to be a community hub, to be a community gathering space. Um, especially, you know, many of our co-ops don't have or have removed are the table, the cafe tables that we've had, because we are not encouraging people to be sitting right across from each other in that way. We're gonna have to envision a new way for people to spend time together and feel that warmth and community that they've always gotten from our co-ops. Um, oh, how to deal with anti-maskers. Boy, I have nothing for you there um, with kindness, but it's also okay to turn folks away if they're not willing to be respectful of your staff and other customers um, in the co-op. Hey. Mark or, or uh, uh, Rebecca, do you have any thoughts on how to, how to handle that? Well, with kindness, we actually um, at our co-op uh, don't have an anti-mask policy for our shoppers. Um, because, and it's been a very difficult decision, um, but the reasoning at this hour by hour moment is because we feel that we don't want to put that added stress on our staff of um, having to police customers. And it's been a, it's been a tough decision, but that, that is the call at this moment. Oh, you're muted, Ben. I'm muted. Sorry. We never thought we'd be dealing with these kind of, even, you know, a few months back, we never thought we'd be dealing with these kind of things. And now we are on an everyday basis. Um, so we are coming up to the top of the hour. I want to thank you again for, in whatever capacity you are part of your co-op, I want to thank you for the work that you are doing for your co-op. It really matters. It really makes a difference. Our co-ops make a difference in our communities in a way that no other businesses do. Um, 
I also want to note we are doing these kind of web events all the time, and you can find more of them at our Col on our Columinate website. Um, and I encourage you to take part in as many as you have time and feel like doing. Um, and of course, you can also find me and Rebecca and Mark on our website if you want to get in touch with us afterwards. You can email or call us um, with comments or ideas that you might have or if we can help you in some way. Thank you all for everything you do for your co-ops. It really, really matters. And this is the time for our co-ops to, to go forward, spread cooperation. We can do this. Uh, so thank you all. Have a great rest of your day.